Hello and welcome to this edition of the Monthly Mystical. I've been painting and I haven't had time to take all that paint off. So <laughs> this is how real it is in the, in the world of magic. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, we've got Alex Sumner talking about the Golden Dawn today. So if you're enjoying my videos, I'd be very grateful if you could subscribe to my channel because everything helps. Um, it helps to bring back, bring up the business, community spirit. So you can all uh, get a get a share with your friends so that everybody can see the amazing things that go on behind the scenes of real life. <laughs> all right, so we're going to bring in uh, Mr. Alex Sumner talking about the Golden Dawn today. How exciting is that? Let me just find him. There we go. And there he is. Let's admit him. There we go. Close. There. Mm -hmm. There we go. And hopefully we're straight in. There we are. Perfect. Uh, good evening, Jackie. Good evening. And how are we this evening? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Good, good. I've just been telling everyone I'm, I've just been painting, so my hands are a bit red. <laughs> okay, right. Well, that's not blood sacrifice, that's just paint. <laughs> okay. <Yeah, you're> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about the Golden Dawn today. Yes, very, indeed. Yeah. Very exciting stuff. So we mm -hmm. should start with a bit of history, I think. Okay. A little bit of history right. of the Golden Dawn. Right, so basically it all starts back in the late 19th century. Late 19th century when there was a, there was a great big occult revival and um, a lot of people, uh, they read Origin of the Species and they were thought they thought that um oh no that means that conventional religion isn't valid anymore but they didn't want to give up on spirituality per se but they started so that was when uh alternative spiritual spiritual spirituality <laughs> first became a thing and then you got mediumship but then you got madame blavatsky's theosophy and that was immensely popular Mm. And then, but then there's a whole load of people who said, well, hang on, I'm not sure about this Eastern flavor of uh, theosophy. I want to have a, a Western based version of theosophy where we can, using Western symbolism, where we can uh, explore ourselves so that we can find enlightenment, but using um, so Greek, uh, Egyptian, and Easter Christian symbolism. Now, the first people to try and do that was Anna Kingsford and Edward Maitland. And they were going on their merry way for a, a, a couple of years. But then Anna Kingsford, um, she got ill and she stopped her holding her meetings. And then three members of her society called the Hermetic Society said, well, if she's not going to do it, we're going to have to do it ourselves. And those three people were uh, William Westcott. Robert Woodman, William Woodman, I should say, and McGregor Mathers. And so they decided to come up with their own uh, westernized hermetic uh, uh, society to take the place of uh, theosophy. And that was basically the golden dawn. So uh, the, uh, the, the, the story they came up with is supposedly based on uh, uh, cipher manuscripts giving um, details of strange rituals which they got from strange places but basically it's a, it's, um, uh, a society uh, to study uh, the symbols of western occultism with the aim of helping uh, people um, uh, explore their own spirituality and hopefully achieve enlightenment and that it, that inevitably means uh, following the hermetic path, following the path of Hermes Trismegistus, um, which involves uh, raising one's uh, consciousness so that one can become united with God. And as a side effect of being able to do that, one even, uh, that involves developing magical powers. So it's also it's a study of a, a magic as well. So um, really, the Golden Dawn is about learning magic, 
with the aim of ho hoping me to become spiritually enlightened as a result of doing so. That was, and that was back in the 19th century. <clears throat> and uh, so that, that's, that's how it started. Then they, of course, they, 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 had, they, um, they, had, they went through some adventures on their, whilst they were trying to do that. Uh, but they had a, bit, a few scandals. The, the most scandalous thing they ever did was they uh, they let in one of them as a member, a young man called Alistair Crowley, uh -huh. <laughs> who, who helped uh, who helped break up the original order. And um, Alistair Crowley then went off and did his own thing, and the the original order splintered and fractioned. But and they, but uh, various people have tried to keep it going in various forms or another until uh so and then we got various people uh join uh, as a result of that um uh one person joined he was paul fost case and he joined and then he left and went and founded uh, builders of the Antitum. another one was uh dion fortune who joined and then she left and she uh, founded society of the inner light and both these societies Although they weren't the Golden Dawn, they borrowed copious amounts of Golden Dawn teachings. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, another guy joined, and he was a young man called Israel Rigardi. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, uh, the amount of teachings that the Golden Dawn um, is, uh, generated is so valuable, it's a shame that the organization itself is falling apart. So what he did was um, he, he, th he, he published all of the golden dawn materials and then um resigned and so the original order came um eventually sort of petered out completely but uh the the, the teachings were made, put in the public eye and then uh, fast forward about 40 years uh to the 1970s when a guy called chick cisro he decided um to recreate an authentic golden dawn based on Israel Gadi's teachings. And he eventually met Israel Gadi himself, and then he established an order. And then uh, the, the Golden Dawn has now sprung up and is uh, again anew. And it's, it's not necessarily uh, directly connected to the original order, but it, it, it exists in, in uh, the United Kingdom, United States, and across the world. As a, as as a commemorative order of the original uh, of the original Golden Dawn. So. Wow! Yeah, brilliant. So um, yeah. So when uh, so really it's so that the whole the system as we know it today. Yeah. Would be from Chick Cicero and also from um, his wife, I believe. Yeah, Chick and Tabitha Cicero, they run their, their order from out of Florida. And uh, what they do is um, they, they try to do it as authentically as possible because the, what they've been doing is they've been going back to the original materials and uh, studying the materials carefully. And they, they make sure that uh, all, the, all the ceremonies are done properly, all, all the magic is done properly. The, the goal, because... The thing about the Golden Dawn, it's a, a magical order. It's actually one of the first magical orders per se. It's why, like one of the first orders that was actually formed for the specific purpose of practicing magic. Um, I think there was, um, uh, with the possible exception of the Elu Cohen's, which um, came, uh, which was started a hundred years before and then sort of closed down a bit later uh, the, the golden dawn it was actually formed as a, a, a magical order to admit uh, uh, men and women called fratres and sororities which is latin for brothers and sisters for the express purpose of uh, first studying magic and then practicing magic and <clears throat> so after that uh, the various magical orders came into being, but they really all uh, took their template from the Golden Dawn. Mm, yeah. Or, so the Golden Dawn is uh, the, like the, one of the most uh, influential uh, magical orders out there. 
I believe that um, a lot of the um, some of the Golden Dawn stuff um, is sort of Masonic uh, in um, in its in its origins in some yeah. some ways. As yeah, sort of, sort of. Because see, back in the uh, 19th century, if you wanted to form a secret society of any kind whatsoever, um, the tradition of the time was to form it on Masonic lines, and that, that matters whether it did, uh, that uh, was whether it was either uh, Masonic or non-Masonic, or it was actually a cult or non-occult or anything. It's like so, for example. If you wanted to form a, a secret society uh, for um, what would you call it uh, for um, uh, protecting uh, the Protestant religion in uh, Northern Ireland from uh, from Catholics, you, you'd, for, you'd form it along the, you'd form it along a, a lodge based system, and that's like the Orange Order. And then you got. Uh, uh, the uh, supporters of, uh, if you wanted to form a secret society for the supporters of the exile of Napoleon, you'd form it on a Masonic basis. Uh, and then if you wanted to form a, a secret society for the study of the occult, well, the, the founders of the occult uh, assumed, uh, well, let's form it on a, a lodge basis. So we've got, um, it's a, a secret society, it's got, um, it's got initiation rituals, it's got passwords, it's got uh, uh, secret signs and grips and so forth. But the innovation that they made on the, that basic Masonic uh, model is what they say, uh, the various secret things that we do. They're not just uh, uh, see, um, secret uh, for the sake of it. They have actually got magical uh, significance. So, for example, the sign of the first grade is, um, well, it's been revealed. The sign, there are two signs of the first grade of the neophyte uh, grade. They have been revealed publicly in the, in, in, this is Israel, regard, this is a copy of Israel Regardi's Golden Dawn. And I believe um, it's jokingly called the Black Brick, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Although this, this is the, this is the, um, the black, the black fragment. I should say because uh, look, this is um, <laughs> this is my, this is my this is my copy. I've had this for about uh, twenty since nineteen ninety six, yes. and it's uh, well it's, used. <laughs> yeah, well used. So it's like so the sign. There's two secret signs of the neophyte grade. I like that and like that. Mm. Now, so in Masonic terms, uh, if there was a mason, they'd just say, oh. Uh, that's a mode of recognition. But Golden Dawn says, no, it's not just a sign of grade. It's um, this projects power, mm. and this seals your aura, to um, to to so that you're um, assuming the god form of Harpocrates, and uh, sealing your aura from astral influences. And <laughs> so they um, the um, so the the, the um, I think it's John Michael Greer who says that in a magical order, there are there every sign has um, every every thing has three levels to it: the um, uh, the literal, the symbolic, and the magical. So is like um, so where uh, so for example, we say um, signs uh, mo literal um, is that they're modes of recognition. The symbolic is that they, they say that is basically represents Horus projecting power, and this is Harpocrates sealing, sealing the mysteries. But the magical is to say that the, these, um, these are actual magical techniques. This is a projection of power, and this is a, the sign, a sealing of the aura. Mm -hmm. Now, so, and so the Golden Dawn recognizes all three, the literal, the symbolic, and the magical, whereas, uh, um, uh, an esoteric Freemason would probably only recognize, uh, might only recognize the, the literal and the symbolic yeah. and possibly the magical if they were a bit, a bit more inclined. But the sort of the knife and fork Freemasons, they would only probably recognize the literal if, yeah. if that. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, yeah, so the, yeah, that's that. Uh, the, uh, that's uh, really the the, um, the so the 
Because the Golden Dawn originated in the late 19th century and the Masonic influence was uh, prevalent in the late 19th century, that really explains the uh, why there is a, a Masonic, a sort of a Masonic flavour to the Golden Dawn. If a Freemason came into the Golden Dawn thinking he was, he was, he was expecting a, just another Masonic order, he'd be quickly disappointed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and true. he'd be quickly, quickly horrified, and he <laughs> and uh, he would think that oh blimey, in the Golden Dawn you actually have to do work. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I understand. It's, it's quite a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, uh, in uh, in the because you don't you do you get their grades to go. Each grade is a um, uh, you 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 receive knowledge lectures and you do an exam in each one and and you pass the exam and that's your qualification for going up for going up into the next grade. And then in the inner order, you don't just sit and write sit an exam. You actually have to do practicals as well, um, and that's actually um, demonstrations of ceremonial magic itself. Yes. So every um, so, in other words, everyone who's got a grade in the Golden Dawn has actually has hasn't just got a, a grade in name. They've actually um, uh, really achieved something. Yeah, done the work, isn't so, it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit like going to university. <laughs> yeah, quite, quite. Yeah, yeah, it's this, yeah. Uh, so there is, um, so there's, there's, there's a lot to get. There's a lot of information in the Golden Dawn. There's, there's mm. like huge amounts, right? So yeah, um, I mean, you start off. Explain a little bit about how it, how it works. Obviously, you're not going to be able to tell us eh, a lot of stuff, but um, on how it works from the beginning to set to up to the inner order. So what, what's right. why you know. How 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 is it affecting the the person who's doing the work basically? Okay, so um, basically you come in and you're told first of all you're told to um, uh, learn uh, various symbolism. For example, the Kabbalistic tree of life, um, which you've got on your on your which wall I have behind, behind me. That one there. If you can yep, kind yep. of see that, yeah, there it is. And then <laughs> is uh, we got to learn everything about the Kabbalah. So first we learn about the Hebrew alphabet. Um, there, there's someone, uh, I, certain person we know says uh, they well the um, they find it ironic that uh, they're sworn to uh, the golden Dawn, people in the golden dawn are sworn to secrecy and then told the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, but it's not. It's not the fact. It's not the Hebrew alphabet isn't a, a secret. It's the fact that the Golden Dawn learns it is the secret. So yes. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, we learn all about the uh, uh, the Kabbalah. So uh, eventually, we learn. Um, we introduced to it in stages. Uh, and there's a good reason for that. Those stages, isn't there? Because there's yeah, just yeah. so much information, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the Kabbalah, the astrology, uh, the tarot, the elements, um, the uh, div divination in the form of uh, geomancy, mm. uh, alchemical symbolism, um, uh, the, the various angels, and so forth. And the whole point of learning all this information in the outer order is that everything you learn in the outer order is something that you'll uh, make practical use of in the inner order. So, for example, if in the outer order you're, you, <coughs> it says, right, you've got to learn about the Kabbalistic tree of life, that immediately tells you that you will be expected to make practical use of that in the ceremonial magic of the inner order. Mm. Likewise, um, the the in the grade ceremonies of the Golden Dawn, it, they men, they keep mentioning uh, oh, the, the this is the Enochian tablet and it, it's got uh, the the three secret names of God and numberless uh, uh, 
angelic names, you find an angelic names on them. And the point of this is to uh, alert the, uh, the candidate, the aspirant, to the fact that uh, Enochian magic is made use of in the inner order. Mm. Um, the, uh, the, yeah, and the, 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 the grades uh, ceremonies are, uh, have an elaborate structure to them. And the point about these great ceremonies is that their structure uh, is uh, the magical formulae made use of in the inner order. So you experience them passively as a candidate. And then in the inner order, you actually make use of the things you've experienced as an adept, as a magician. Mm. And the, uh, the neophyte ceremony itself is practiced most often and the the biggest uh, teaching uh, in the inner order is that the whole most of the ceremonial magic you'll ever do evocations talismans spiritual development divination is actually based structure wise on the neophyte ceremony mm. so the way that energy circulates the way that you do purifications and consecrations and you do conjurations various ones it's all based on the outer order it's all based on what you learn whilst you're going through the grades of the outer mm. yeah so um uh, and i believe that uh that they've structured structured it uh you're actually on the path of the tree of life right yeah so yeah so um yes it's uh, basically it's as if you are ascending from the bottom going up. Uh, so you start off as a neophyte, which is like outside the tree or at the right at the bottom of Malkinth. Then you go in the first grade. Thank you, Jackie. Um, <laughs> the first grade, it corresponds to Malkinth. Uh, so yes, thank you. And then the next grade, you go up uh, to uh, Yesod. And the symbolism of the ceremony is exactly that. It's exactly of someone uh, traveling up the tree of life uh, with, a, uh, with a, a temple uh, full of the symbols of whatever part of the tree of life um, you're, 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 you're traversing at that particular point in time. And this um, incidentally, um, there, was a, there was a guy, uh, an adept of the order called Brody Inns, who uh, just said that, in the, well, you can actually uh, use this in the inner order. You can actually sort of astrally uh, travel up the tree of life in the same manner as you've, um, you've experienced it uh, going through the grades of initiation. So you imagine yourself in a natural temple with all the symbolism around you and you travel up uh, uh, on a natural journey. And basically, uh, that's path working. That's path working on the Kabbalistic tree of life. And mm. the golden dawn effectively invented it. Mm. <laughs> I, I should... And they, invent, they invented quite a lot of um, uh, magical techniques, which are now used as standard throughout the Western mystery tradition. For example, the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, ah, the various yes. pentagram rituals, the various hexagram rituals, mm. um, the rose cross ritual, um, uh, the the various Enochian calls. I think a lot of it, what I had a lot of it what, uh, is to do with the fact that. Um, the Golden Dawn first formulated all these magical techniques, and then Crowley thought, these are really brilliant, I'm going to steal them all. Yes. <laughs> Pass them off as my own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, so the, um, there was somebody um, uh, that I was uh, I've subscribed to on the YouTube channel, but yeah. had a bit of a had a bit of a thing of talking about the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram uh, yeah. and, and he kind of says I think his argument was why is it called the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram so maybe you could put some explanation onto that and um, why lesser and not just banishing ritual of the pentagram or, well, or why banishing or what you know 
Well, the lesser, the lesser doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. The lesser banishing ritual, the pentagram, is actually one of the most powerful rituals uh, that uh, there is. It's um, yeah. it's a good, all powerful uh, ritual for setting up magical protection around yourself. The reason it's called lesser banishing ritual, the pentagram, is that there is a a, um, a supreme banishing ri uh, ritual, the pentagram which is uh, more, uh, more particular. The lesser banishing ritual is a general, general protection ritual and the supreme ritual, the pentagram is more general. Um, in the lesser ritual, the pentagram, which is taught to everyone when they first, um, when they first join. So when they first join, they're taught the most powerful and useful uh, oh. ritual they, they're gonna use straight away. For good so reason, very, yeah. Um, yeah, so they, there's like um, it's like one pentagram uh, is used, one form of the pentagram is used. That's done uh, four times in the, in the four quarters, east, uh, south, west, and north. And then uh, with uh, divine names in, in, uh, accompanying each quarter, and then you have the four archangels and everything is opened and closed with the Kabbalistic cross. Mm. And so basically that the LBRP uh, um, invokes angelic protection all around you. The uh, supreme ritual of the pentagram is, um, is when you are actually wanting to work with uh, a particular or particular elements. Mm. And so uh, that's uh, that's um, that's uh, that's a more advanced. That's the kind of thing you do when you are actually getting into ceremonial magic proper. Mm. So you you would use a supreme uh, uh, pentagram ritual for um, working specifically with the elemental for with the four elemental forces or one of the four elemental forces, mm. or yes. or or with the zodiacal forces. Ah yes, because mm. you use um, because you use the supreme ritual of the pentagram to invoke the, the forces of the zodiac. Yes. Oh, right. Excellent. Yes. Perfect. So, um, so anybody that, that there are temples, um, like uh, as you mentioned earlier, there are temples about. So uh, mm. there's there's a there's a couple in America, right? Um, yeah. I don't well, think I, I don't think there was uh, there used to be one in Spain, but I don't think that's there anymore. Is that correct? I'm not sure. And then obviously you've got is there how many is in the UK? <laughs> well, of which I know of. Uh, I think there's three which okay. I know of. Yeah. Uh, see, the thing is, uh, there are several Golden Dawn orders. Not all of them are uh, well. Uh, are in, in or in communication with each other, or if they are in communication with us, they don't actually have a formal relationship with one another. Mm. So um, there's so when I say there's three Golden Dawn temples in the UK of which, which I know, there might be more, but I'm I'm not associated with them. Yeah, yeah. So and then. Um, but if you wanted to um, uh, get in touch with them, I think uh, I think there are two. Uh, you can do either, you can do two things. You can either uh, Google um, Chicken Tabitha Cicero on the internet, and then contact them via their own home site. Mm. Or I think you can. Uh, there is a there is a website which I've um, which I found is very useful in the past, which is called hogd-uk.com. Ah, mm. the Hermetical uh, Order of the Golden Dawn, UK. Yeah, yeah. The, so if yeah, you were to type that in, would they find it? Um, if you were to type uh, Hermetical Order of the Golden Dawn or just hogd. Um, hogd-uk.com okay Interesting. yeah the, the 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 bloke who runs it is really helpful okay excellent yes well well anybody that needs uh that would like some more information you've got it on there mm. i might be able to put a link up in the yeah. comments later if i can um yeah excellent so uh what uh what kind of books would you recommend that somebody if 
because I know that there is yeah. a there is a book that you can study for yourself and do yeah things uh, yeah. for yourself right self initiation right okay most of the books uh well I am not most of the books for beginners unfortunately I can't show you because uh, I've got only got them in electronic format ah uh -huh, okay uh but um one good book uh is called the essential golden door mm. and that is by chicken tab for cicero and that's a very good introduction to the whole subject okay yeah uh introduction to uh the kind of magic you would expect kind of what was it like in golden dawn order and then it, you go after that if you've uh, read that and you and you and your enthusiasm is is, uh, is all fired up and everything you can either do one of two things you can actually go and find uh try and find a um, golden dawn temple into which you become initiated or you can try and work on your own and uh, chicken tappy have uh, created a book uh which uh, helps people uh follow the last path it also it's not it's not too unhelpful for people uh, for, uh, going through a temple as well that's called self-initiation in the golden dawn tradition and that's uh, otherwise known as the green brick because it's a big <laughs> massive thing uh what i did i never i never had the green brick when i was going up so all i did was as soon as i was able to um um get uh, uh as soon as I had actually heard about this thing called the Golden Dawn, I actually found went and found um, this book, uh, the Black Brick, by Israel Rigardi. So that's uh, this was the God. What was this? What is this? The sixth edition. Okay, yeah. That was, uh, that was it. My this one is one of my favourite books. This has now been republished. Yeah. In oh, this, you've uh, you've got the new one. Is, well, yes, in this uh, seventh edition. Very pretty. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I, although personally speaking, I actually prefer this one. But uh, yeah, so. I think that's the one that most people use, is it not? I yeah. Um, like and that, oh, that has everything in it, right? That's got that's got lots and lots of. Um, yeah, oh. see, technically speaking, because there aren't actually <clears throat> there aren't actually any secrets in the Golden Dawn. Because theoretically, it's all it's all in the public in domain. The public now, yeah. The other book I would I would recommend um, for beginners is this one. Ah, uh, oh, yes, middle, the middle, middle pillar. pillar by, sorry. And because uh, this has got like the middle pillar ritual, uh, which is um, uh, an important ritual for invoking divine power, and it can be used. Uh, it can be just used for. Um, one's own benefit for it can be used for divine healing sort of a Kabbalistic version of Reiki could be used could be um, uh, adapted for practical magic simple forms of practical magic um, and uh, I think uh, golden dawn temples do tend to do the the, the middle pillar ritual uh, uh, beginning of every at uh, the beginning of every ritual so it's, it's all as a way of coming together as a temple yes linking up and the, this also contains details of the lbrp as well so in other words this book has got uh the two most two of the most important uh, rituals uh of, in the uh, for a beginner you got the lbrp and you got the uh the, the middle pillar. pillar ritual itself Perfect. and the yeah yeah, so those are those are the main books I'd say. Um, there there are others, but uh, the, uh, the those, those are the main ones. Uh, you, you you find if you when you get more into the Golden Dawn, there's uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things you can research. Yeah. Uh, Chick Ch Ch and Tabby have written a lot of uh, material, mm. and uh, I've got so there's um. I believe yeah, they've got quite a lot of books, haven't they? They've yeah, written. yeah. This is one. This is all Garden of Pomegranates. This is originally by Israel Regardi. Regardi, yeah. This is and this is a general overview of the Kabbalah itself. So yeah. it's useful in that regard. And this has got uh, 
path working on Catalyst Tree of Life as well. So, mm, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's given us a bit of an insight into the Golden Dawn. Yeah. And, um, yes, and if there's any questions, I'm sure that if anybody has any questions in the comments, I'm sure we might be able to help answer them or send them on to the right person mm. who can answer them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's been brilliant. Thank you so much, Mr. No, Summer. You're, yeah. you're welcome. You're welcome. Ah, that's brilliant. So if anybody's interested in the Golden Dawn, then yeah, I will try and put up uh, the links and I'll, I will get Mr. Summer. He might be able to help me uh, if I get stuck. Oh, okay. <laughs> and with the books, etc. Right. Okay, yes. right. Perfect. Thank you so much for share, sharing with us some information about the GD. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> and uh, I shall hopefully see you soon, Mr. Sumner. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh... <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot All for right. joining. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs> wow, that was awesome, right? So we got lots more information um, about another thing now. So yeah, so if you're interested in doing a bit of Golden Dawn, then uh, I'll try and put the links in if I can underneath in the comments. If you've got anything to say, if you've got a comment or you want to ask a question, then stick that in the comments and don't forget subscribe to the channel as we've got lots more um amazing interviews uh, all on the different arts the different esoteric stuff and some other secret stuff going on um yep so remember subscribe press the little bell uh, and then you get notified when um, a new video comes up and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you so much for joining me once again for the Monthly Mystical. And I will see you all soon. Have a fabulous, fabulous day.